if you actually take a look at everything in front of the table, this is the amount of food we order every week just for this kitchen. So those animals I named to you are going to eat all of this fruit and vegetables and um, the lemurs as well. So all of this fruit and veggies goes to just uh, mostly the bats and the lemurs. So we order this every week and I brought you, uh, if you want to show this tub over here, this is the leftover food from last week. So we use a lot of produce every week for our bats and our lemurs. And I have some diets prepped for you guys so you can get a look at it. It's pretty cool. So the bats we have in Ohio that are native to our state are insect-eating bats. They're very, very important. Um, but the bats that we have at the Akron Zoo are fruit-eating bats. And I wanted to show you how much fruit they eat every day. So this is the amount of fruit that our little bats are going to eat in just one day. They get fed twice a day, so we're going to throw this through a machine to chop it up. And they'll get half of it in the morning, half of it at night. They'll also get a lot of water and some grape juice and uh, this food here called soft bill. That's a good supplement for fruit. It has a lot of great nutrients and minerals in it. So that's a lot of food. We have about um, somewhere from five to 600 bats in our little bat exhibit. And they're gonna eat all of this fruit. They barely ever leave anything on the floor. Um, and this is what it looks like ground up. So this is actually obviously a different amount of food this is the amount that our big bats are going to eat um, in one day. So they get fed every morning, and then after we're done cleaning their exhibit, we hand feed them grapes. Um, but when we throw all this food for the little bats through the processor, it'll also look like this in nice little chunks. And what most fruit bats do, and what our fruit bats do, is um, they mostly just kind of chew up all of the fruit for the juice and they spit out the remains of all of the fibrous material. So there's usually a decent amount of cleanup to do because even if they are eating all of the fruit, there's pieces of skins and stuff left on exhibit. Um, I do also have an example. <laughs> oh, sorry on that. What the little bat diet looks like when it's complete. So that has the soft bill which is all big because it's soaked up the juices and water. Um, it has a bunch of water in it and grape juice and that chopped up fruit. And that's just half of a day's worth of diet for them. So they get one of those buckets in the morning and they get one of those buckets later on in the afternoon. And then our big bats also get this stuff called Zucrine. And it's actually originally intended for primates, but it also has a lot of really great supplements that are good for our big bats as well. Um, and they also get the soft bill, which is the fruit supplement. So this will actually get mixed in here for our big bats. And our big bats also get fruits, uh, sorry, veggies and greens on rotation. So every other day they either get veggies or they get greens and that replicates what they would eat in the wild. On boxes they really love corn. Um, it could be because it is a pretty juicy vegetable. Um, so we tend to give them what they like but we also give them other things too. So they will eat celery. It's not one of their favorite veggies but also good for them. We like to get them a variety so they're not eating the same thing every day. Um, and our Rodriguez flying foxes, the really fluffy ones, um, they really prefer green pepper.
our diet. Um, we have whole prey items over here, um, as well as big chunks of bone, and we also have big boxes of cake. Um, the lions alone eat about 35 to 40 pounds of meat a day. Um, so, as you can imagine, our smaller we still go through quite a bit of food. So, one of the main things they eat is this stuff is called Nebraska brand ground meat. Um, this stuff, it is made in Nebraska, but the brand itself is called Nebraska as well. So when we're talking about our carnivores, we'll often refer to Nebraska as just their main food source, and that's what this is. Uh, so this is a frozen uh, shell of ground beef. Um, it contains a lot of extra stuff. So as you can see, it does say feline diet on it. We also have other ones such as bird of prey diet, um, senior diet, which is um, similar to the feline, but made for older cats. But this stuff contains a lot of extra stuff that they would get from a whole animal if they'd be eating it. So it's not like your ground beef that you're going to pick up at the grocery store for your cookouts. Um, we definitely don't want to eat this. It has like chunks of bone and cartilage and stuff like that inside of it. So um, the cats really, really love it. Um, depending on the cat, sometimes we actually give them different kinds of food. Um, Milan came in, Milan or Jaguar, Milan came in on a different kind of meat. She actually gets Nebraska brand ground horse. So uh, we do adjust all of our diets to the individual animal if we need to do that. So as you can see, this is frozen. Uh, we don't feed any frozen meat out to our animals. Um, sometimes we will in the, in the summer, just for an enrichment that you can go out and until it's thawed. But we pull all of our meat diets the day before, and then we'll have it ready for them the next day. So um, show you guys just some other things that they get throughout the week. Um, so we do have two different kinds of bones that we feed out here. Um, this is a horse shank. Um, it has quite a bit of meat on it still. Um, we give these to the lions once a week. They get the whole thing. Um, we also give one of these to Milan each week, but she does not get the whole thing. That'd be a lot of meat for a smaller cat. So we actually cut a whole bunch of this off and give her about a pound of meat left with the bone. So then she can kind of have a snack while she's chewing on her bone. So in the wild, big cats are not going to be eating every single day. So we give them a bone day as kind of like that fast day that they would uh, naturally get. So a lot of the meat that we do cut off here, we do save. So we can use it for training purposes. Uh, we also use it for training purposes with our condors. So if you guys don't know who our condors are, there are very large birds in the of the wild, about a nine foot wingspan, and they eat carrion, which is um, like already dead animals. So we use chunks of meat to train for them. And then these are just little knuckle bones. They have little bits of cartilage and stuff on them still. So they do eat some of it off of there, but they really just like to chew on it and play with it. Um, the bears actually get these once a week too, and they will kind of scoop all the bone marrow out of the inside. So they really maximize what they get out of their food items. So. Um, we do feed meat to the bears, but it's probably not as much as you think. Um, the bears get meat seasonally. They're getting some right now. They'll get a whole lot in the fall, but for the rest of the year, they're pretty much on the board, just eating fruits and veggies and like berries and nuts. So why is it important for the animals to eat bones? For them to eat bones? Mm -hmm. um, so the bones have a lot of extra kind of grit to them, as you can imagine. Um, same with same with like these rabbits, they get these once a week. So the bones and the fur, they will eat all of that too. Helps them clear out their digestive system. So it essentially acts like kind of like an exfoliant for their insides. So um, this is a rabbit. We get them frozen. So we don't feed any live animals to our other animals. Um, so this guy will thaw him out and then give it to the cats and they will eat the whole thing. They start with the head and work their way down and it's super gross, we totally understand, but they love it. So, and we also have fish. Our Jaguar Milan really, really likes fish. Um, some of the other cats are very hit and miss about the fish. Um, some of them will eat it right up. Some of them will stick their noses up to it literally and be like, oh, why are you offering this to me? You're so horrible. Um, so we only give these to them essentially as 
novel food items or treats. Um, but this is mostly for the penguins. I just grabbed a sample for you guys to see. The penguins eat a lot of fish. So we go through about 40 pounds a day for them. Uh, it's about 10,000 pounds a year. So the penguins are actually one of the most expensive animals that we feed here at the zoo. Um, the bats are the most expensive, I believe. Yes. So um, kind of surprising are some of our smallest animals, most expensive to take care of. So this stuff is capelin. Um, this is like the main course for the penguins. They get this at breakfast and dinner. And they can eat anywhere from one fish per feed to I've seen penguins eat like 70 fish a day. Um, and then these are just little smelts, just kind of like cookies for penguins, essentially. They don't have a lot of nutritional value, but they really, really like them. That's cute, it is, Leah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we just want to give treats to our animals, just like we want treats. Alrighty, so let's see. What else can we talk about with diets down here? Um, we do have different ways of presenting diets. So uh, we were talking a little bit about enrichment earlier. We can provide food to the animals in different ways. So one of the things I like to do with um, like their fruits and veggies for the bats is you can cut it up in little pieces and kind of hang it around for the bats. That way it's more um, like a foraging behavior for them instead of it being like in their bowls where they normally eat out of. Um, so it gives them something different to do. In the wild, they would be foraging for their food every day. So our animals are a little spoiled, um, but we also make sure that they are giving, uh, we are giving them ways to um, exhibit their normal behaviors that they would in the wild. And I know the cats have boxes and cool stuff. Yes, we do a lot of that um, food enrichment for our cats as well, um, especially the bears. The grizzlies are big time foragers. Um, that's pretty much what they do all day, every day in the wild. So we actually feed them three separate times a day at least. Sometimes we'll stick a fourth one in there, um, but we are always putting their food in different places, putting it in different boxes or toys and they always have to kind of figure it out so um, we've actually given them like a pile of food before and they've often kind of chose to go somewhere else and look for more scattered food um, we do that with the cats sometimes um, obviously they do have that hunting instinct so they're going to be searching out lots of smells um, we'll actually save some of the like kind of blood juice from our thawed meat and make trails around the exhibit for them to sniff out and find more food items or just put it out there as like a enrichment for the day give them a whole bunch of different smells do you ever um, use spices for enrichment we definitely use spices for enrichment um, it's actually kind of funny we do have a whole big variety of spices and extracts that we use for enrichment and sometimes you find one that the animals really really like so the lions love peppermint um, pretty much anything minty they will come inside and just roll all over it and get that scent all over their entire body. Um, the smaller cats down here, especially the snow leopards, uh, one of our other keepers just realized that they are really in love with oregano. Um, they <laughs> were just rolling all over it the other day, getting oregano scent all over their body. So we had like a little Italian smelling snow leopards for a day. <laughs> um, the Bears will do this as well, especially Cheyenne. I see her do it a lot. If we put something weird smelling on the exhibit, like um, sometimes we'll give them little fish fillets or we have the stuff called What's Cooking, which is kind of like oatmeal with a bunch of extra veggies and stuff in it. We'll put that on the exhibit and Cheyenne will just like completely smash her whole face into it, <laughs> smear it all over her head. So all of our animals really like scents and we always try to provide something different so they can do all kinds of different things with them. So we have don't want to make them just eating out of a bowl every single day. That's super boring. Um, speaking of different things, we actually switch up a lot of our animals' diets every day. Um, so we try not to give them the same thing all the time. So if you guys see on this board up here, um, this is the diets for quite a bit of our animals that we do in here. 
Um, but for as an example, the capybara, she gets something different every other day. So she gets this stuff every day, and then she gets a different fruit and veggie every single day. And we do this with the animals throughout the zoo. So um, usually an animal is not getting the same diet back to back. And even if they are, like for example, we'll give sweet potato one day, just cut up, and then the next day, if they're getting sweet potato again, maybe we'll cook it and put it out, some, like smear it out instead of just set it out there. So try to have a lot of variation here. So what does the capybara eat? So the capybara is essentially a very big rodent. So she will eat a lot of veggies and fruits, and she also eats something called ADF, which is little pellets that is made for animals that eat a lot of like grasses, essentially herbivores. Um, she also gets a lot of greens that she chews on. So that stuff is over here. So this stuff is called ADF. And I apologize, I honestly don't remember what ADS stands for, but that is what this is called. So um, we actually go through a lot of kibble here at the zoo. Um, similar to, you know, like what you feed your cats or dogs at home, I have a lot of extra nutrients that's specifically made for our animals. Um, we get them from, we get a lot of our stuff from a company called Missouri, and they make specific exotic animal diets. So um, like up the hill in the grizzly kitchen, we have stuff that's literally called bear chow. It is for the bears. <laughs> it has a lot of extra fat and protein in it, and it actually kind of smells a little bit fishy. So it's a lot of stuff that's made for um, large omnivorous bears. We have, we, when we had our other bears who were more like um, fruit eating, we had different bear chow for them. Um, we also have exotic canine. That stuff is not quite dog food, but it's got a lot of extra fat and protein in it because all of our wolves and coyotes are always outside being very active. So probably need a little bit more of that energy than your dog would at home just sleeping on the couch right now. What do giant millipedes eat? I am not positive, but I do know that the worms that we feed out eat vegetables. I would think that they also eat vegetables, but I don't know. That's a yes. question. I do know that they put large chunks of fruit or veggies in there, and they just kind of wander over them and eat them as they go. So if there's big chunks of food, we'll feed them for a little while. And then they kind of sleep, eat all the good parts and leave the skin, kind of like the little back. Um, so then they just pull that out and put a new chunk in. What are the primate biscuits made of? Um, I don't know what they're made out of, but they're also, like Kristen said, specially formed for the primates. And we feed them a variety of biscuits, too. So we have um, and biscuits anywhere from, like, closer to this size. And then we also feed them larger biscuits that are, you know, like that. Um, they have different um, amounts of fiber and nutrients in them. and. Um, depending on the animals, some of them prefer to have them a little mushier, so we'll soak them so they're a little softer for them. Or if we have an older primate that maybe has a more difficult time chewing really hard things, like if they have a tooth issue or something like that, we'll also soak the biscuits for them so it's softer for them. Um, but we also will feed them uh, the primate biscuits out to us. Yesterday, fed out some primate biscuits to our goats, mixed with some raisins, and they really enjoyed that. Um, so they're actually able to be used with other animals as well. So what animal uh, is the easiest to prepare food for, and what animal is the hardest? I think the easiest would probably be the goats. Yeah. Um, the goats. Well, Christina was talking about like an enrichment food day, but on a day-to-day -day basis, the goats just essentially get kibble and hay. Um, so we just kind of put that in a bowl or in a hay bag, and they're done, so. Yeah, I'd say also um, the bald eagles and the condors, they get thawed out um, rats and birds. So we basically just thaw them, and the next day we feed it out to them. Um, but they also get their food with enrichment often too. Okay. Dominic. Hardest, I don't know what would be the hardest to feed. 
Dominic, really fast, please don't. We do not mind all of your questions. Ask away. Okay. So. Um, the hardest ones to prepare, I would, well, the bat diets, there's just a lot, so that's hard. But I would think the little aviary birds will oh, yeah. get hard because um, we have a ton of birds in our aviary. We actually have the largest collection of songbirds in the country, um, we, so we have to make a lot of food. And all of those birds are very small, so we have to dice a lot of food. And all of this is, um, sometimes they use a food processor, but most of the time you're just chopping like hundreds of grams of fruits and veggies, very, very small. So it's very, very tedious and time consuming and they do it every single day. Do you record how much the animals eat every day? Yes, we do. That is actually a huge part of our care that we give. Um, an animal, if they're not eating enough, or if they're just like acting over hungry, um, it really tells us a lot about what's going on inside the animal. Um, so if someone is not eating their diet that they normally eat, or suddenly decides they don't like something that they normally really like, then we can really pay attention to see if there's some sort of weird trend, if they're acting sick or anything like that. So every single day we record how much every single animal eats in the entire zoo. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you for joining us for cooking for critters. And thank you for asking questions. And hope you guys have a great day. See you soon.